Today I'm going to show you five great bass techniques jam-packed into this line right here. So the first one is alternate plucking, something we do a lot. Okay, those first two notes, just two A's on the fifth fret of the E string. I stands for index and the M is middle. And generally when we're playing bass, but by no means all the time, but we are usually doing alternates plucking. Now that dot under the first note, that stands for staccato. That means staccato. That means play the note short, like that. And that line under the other one, tenuto. We use Italian words to describe what we want to do in music. So it's like a short, long thing, even though they're all eighth notes. Let's get that going. As soon as I'm done with that first note, I'm just releasing pressure, still touching the string, releasing pressure, careful not to get a harmonic. One good way to practice that, alternate plucking. We're just going to split this line up into little constituent parts because it's quite tricky. The key to something that's hard like this is just to be a bit patient, split it up and slow it down. That's what we'll do. Let's just take that. Okay, so we've got a bit more alternate plucking. We've got a ghost note and then we have a hammer on. I'll play it really slowly. We'll just do that bit. So I've got third finger on the A, seventh fret of the D string. It's a pluck with the index finger. Now right there you have a harmonic over that seventh fret. And if you lift off, this is a ghost note we're on now. If you lift off right there, and you're still touching the string, you will get a harmonic, which you don't want. So how do we avoid that? The key is to use more than one finger. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm actually using third finger right on the seventh fret, right behind that fret. And I've got my second finger and even first finger reinforcing that. So now when I lift up off the note, off the A, got all those fingers touching the string. Now I mentioned five techniques, really there's a sixth, and that's muting. So I've got my thumb on the A string here and I'm backing it up on the E string. I'm also taking care, you know, what am I doing? I'm using a bit of third finger here, a bit of first finger to touch the G string. There's only one sound going on here, okay? In fact, I've just realized I'm only using my third and second fingers. I want that first finger ready for the fifth fret, the C on the G string. So get it ready there, use these two fingers for the muting, for the ghost note. Even that might be quite tricky, you just slow it down. So it's three, four, one, two. One. In this next section, let's concentrate on that hammer on, and then we've got another technique called raking. So, this is the bit I mean. Let's go hammer on first. So, this is the C to the C sharp, fret five to six on the G string. I've got my first finger pressed down on the C. And it's that second finger, quite curled and quite stiff, coming down from about an inch above the C-sharp. You want the hammer on to be as loud as the pluck. So just isolate that. You can actually use any finger, combination of two fingers to strengthen your hand and to work on hammer-ons between any finger. But here, it's first and second. Then we have a G to an E. And this is raking. So this is where we use one finger to pluck in the direction of a high-pitched string like G down towards E. And you can get really fast notes going by not having to do alternate plucking. Now this is all about timing, I'll slow it right down. So this just drags down in that direction and you've got a hammer on. As soon as that first finger is done on the C, 
you move immediately to the fifth fret of the D string, the G. And then your third finger is in place to play the E. Okay, I'll go from the beginning. You can use your little finger for the octave here. Really make sure that you're catching that ghost note with more than one finger so you don't get that harmonic. Okay, and then I'll go from this bit. I've actually spotted a seventh technique. So we have alternate plucking once more. That's the I M I M. Let's just do that bit. Just that. And there's that next technique. There are options here when you play. And what I'm doing here is this rolling technique. That's where you get one finger to play two different strings. So what we're doing here, I'm playing the E, seventh fret A string. I've got you know, traditional normal way of playing. I'm playing that with my fingertip. Okay, so that's that. And then instead of moving that finger up and then to the seventh fret of the D string, that's the A, the next note, instead of doing that, I'm just doing this. I'm rolling the finger down to play roughly where that crease is, that first crease there. And that means I don't have to move my fingers, okay? And then I'm doing exactly the same thing on fret five to five on A to D, the D to G. And that's where you tend to use that technique, where you're going from the same fret from one string to another. And raking and this rolling technique are often used in conjunction. Something like that. So from the hammer on. Now this time we've got a bit of raking going with the middle finger at the end. So I'm doing the ghost note on the E string to be able to just drag that middle finger down. So we've got G, E, and the ghost note. Now it's very important when you're raking to come off the notes quickly. Otherwise you'll get this. You'll get a chord, which you might want sometimes, but here you don't. So that's that timing thing I was talking about. Coordination, obviously very important in bass playing. I'm going to play the whole thing really slowly. I'm using that little finger for the octave there. Can use your third finger. Now look, when we go to the full line, we've got twice round that riff. So it's over an A7 chord. All of those notes come from, you know, this selection of notes, this arpeggio, or chromatic notes built around it. When we go to D7, what we do is we go to the 10th fret and you do exactly the same pattern as you did down here. So it's not as horrible as it does actually look. You know, 16th notes always look confusing and difficult on paper. But when you go to the 10th fret, it's the same, watch this. And that ghost note at the very end of the bar, it gives you time to work on another technique I want to show you that's really important, and that's just shifting your hand quickly. I'll do the transition. In fact, I'll do the whole thing. See? It doesn't matter where you do a ghost note. It sounds a bit different, but... I'm shifting during the ghost note, so it gives you a bit of time. Now, a couple of things here. I have a backing track that you can download for free following the link below. It's 100 beats per minute. And I usually do things slightly easier than this. I do have a funk bass course, by the way, that has stuff like this in it. It's quite challenging. It's full of articulations and fast plucking and shifts and that style of music contains a lot of that stuff. But this is quite difficult, so I have a little tip here, which is this. I've got another drum beat going at 100 beats per minute. And this is a practice technique I like to use a lot.
First of all, just ignore drum beats and metronomes. Go through the line like I was doing before, where I broke it down into tiny little pieces. It might take you a while to get this together. Take as long as it takes. When you do start to introduce a drum loop, which you can download this one as well, you can play at half time like this. you're feeling everything half time. It's a really cool practice technique. That's a really good way to get your technique, all, well, all of these techniques, there are seven we've just discussed, to get all of that together in time. It's a really good technique. Don't worry if this seems difficult, okay? It's good to push yourself, but it's also good to learn some practice techniques, like splitting up something that's difficult into tiny little parts, being patient with yourself, you know, taking that one part and maybe, maybe it will take you a whole week to figure out this is how you do hammer-ons. Or even to get to there. What you want to do is slowly play that, but perfectly as possible. When you get the mechanics together, you can just notch up the speed bit by bit. It does take patience. It does take you trying not to get frustrated with everything. So this is good practice for that. If you want another technical workout to move those fingers and learn a few more techniques, then this lesson right here is the one for you. Thanks for watching, see you next time.